السلام عليكم ورحمة الله لعل الرئيس الأمريكي دونالد ترامب خاض حملته الانتخابية استنادا إلى برنامج يقوم على فك ارتباط القوات الأمريكية من الحروب الخارجية غير الدستورية والدائمة لكن ما الحقيقة الكامنة في باطن قرار ترامب بسحب القوات الأمريكية اليوم من أفغانستان وسوريا؟ ولماذا الهلع الإسرائيلي؟ مع راعي الأبرشية المعمدانية في كاليسبل مونتانا والمرشح الرئاسي عام 2008 تشاك بولدوين نتحدث من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعونا لعل عدد هذا الشهر من مجلة ريكويل الأمريكية المعنية بقضايا السلاح والصيد أبرز وبوضوح إعلانا لشركة الأمن السابقة بلاك ووتر يو اس اي الأمريكية على صفحة كاملة وباللون الأسود مع رسالة بسيطة نحن قادمون فهل الحرب في أفغانستان وربما في أماكن أخرى على وشك أن تتم خصخصتها ولا سيما عقب إعلان الرئيس الأمريكي دونالد ترامب قراره سحب القوات الأمريكية المنتشرة في سوريا وأفغانستان وجولات وزير خارجيته بومبيو الشرق أوسطية لطمأنة الدول العربية رجل الأعمال الأمريكي والضابط السابق في البحرية الأمريكية إيريك برينس مؤسس شركة بلاك ووتر التي تعرف الآن باسم أكاديمي حول التودد إلى إدارة الرئيس دونالد ترامب منذ توليه منصبه وسعى إلى ترويج فكرة أن الحرب الأفغانية التي امتدت 18 عاما لن يتم كسبها أبدا من خلال حملة عسكرية تقليدية وقد شارك برينس خلال فصلي الصيف والخريف المنصرمين بنحو مكثف في وسائل الإعلام لتعزيز خصخصة الحرب الأمريكية ولعل القيادة العسكرية الأمريكية الحالية على الأرض ترحب بنبأ يميل إلى الاعتماد على عدد أقل من المرتزقة عوضا عن وجود بصمة عسكرية أمريكية أكبر في السابق رفض البيت الأبيض الخصخصة المحتملة للحرب الأفغانية وانتقدها أنذاك وزير الدفاع السابق جيمس ماتس بشدة حيث رأى أن من الخطر وضع أهداف الأمن القومي للأمة في أيدي المقاولين لكن مع خروج ماتس المفاجئ حتى للبنتاجون قال مسؤول في وزارة الدفاع إن التغيير الجذري سيكون أكثر احتمالا الآن لكن إليكم الجزء المرعب هؤلاء المتعاقدون الخاصون أي المرتزقة يعملون بطريقة لا تخضع لمحاسبة مطلقة لسيادة القانون وهم يعملون خارج الدستور وخارج قواعد الاشتباك وخارج القانون الموحد للقضاء العسكري وخارج قانون الأمم وأيضا خارج التدقيق العام لا يخضعون لأي مساءلة عن أي جرائم قتل أو اختصاب أو نهب أو انتهاكات لحقوق الإنسان القسيس الدكتور تشاك بولدوين راعي أبرشية كاليسبل في ولاية مونتانا السياسي الأمريكي والمرشح الرئاسي لحزب الدستور في انتخابات الرئاسة الأمريكية لعام 2008 ماذا يقرأ في خلفية قرار ترامب سحب القوات الأمريكية وماذا يهيأ من جديد لمنطقتنا؟ Well, you're right. He did campaign on a platform of disengaging. from perpetual foreign war, especially the wars in Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan in the Middle Eastern region. Since he became president, however, he has escalated all of the above, including dropping more bombs in the Middle East than his predecessor, Barack Obama. He sent double the troops to Afghanistan. He increased the troops in Syria. He did just the opposite of what he campaigned to do.
-hmm. Now, of course, he's made the announcement that he's going to withdraw half the troops from Afghanistan, 7,000, mm -hmm. and all 2,000 in Syria. However, as we know now, that withdrawal has been placed on basically hold, um, bearing the uh, political ramifications of Turkey, Israel, etc. So there's no timeline. Mm -hmm. They have, I think, uh, backtracked on the commitment to withdraw troops. So I'm not very optimistic that America is going to withdraw from its uh, involvement in foreign wars in the Middle East. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But actually here, allow me to ask you, sir, what are the U.S. military forces exactly doing today in Syria? <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good question. Ostensibly, they are fighting ISIS and al-Nusra, etc. Uh, I'm of a different opinion, however. I believe that uh, these terrorist groups designed to take out uh, Bashar al-Assad in Syria were actually formed by the intelligence agencies of the United States, CIA, uh, Israel's Mossad, uh, MI6 of Great Britain, et cetera, and that those Western powers were the ones that actually created ISIS, al-Nusra, and these terrorist organizations that we are sensibly fighting in, in Syria. I, I think Everybody knows that this is a, a campaign against uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. It's, it's a campaign against Syria. It's a mm -hmm. campaign against Iran. It is a support tactic for Israel and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, so I certainly don't buy uh, the, uh, the commonly held belief that we are over there fighting ISIS. I just don't think that's truthful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you talked about uh, certain issues that uh, President Trump is taking into calculation when it comes to um, uh, the down drop of the U.S. forces in Syria and that it entails also uh, uh, Israel and Turkey. But Donald Trump has told Benjamin Netanyahu that the U.S. is paying billions of dollars a year for Israeli security and that Tel Aviv should not be worried about losing its influence in the region after the U.S. forces draw down in Syria. Yet such a decision by Trump dismayed Israel. Why? Well, I, I think that's all public theater. I, I, there is no way that the United States is going to withdraw any military support from the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. when I ran for president in 2008, I campaigned on a platform of eliminating all foreign aid, including the foreign aid to Israel. But unfortunately, uh, our government is heavily influenced by the Israeli lobby here in the United States. And the monies that are spent uh, to Israel far exceed uh, monies that are given to any other foreign country. Mm -hmm. So there's absolutely no reason for Israel to think that the United States is going to back away from its military commitment to Israel. I, th I personally think we should back away from that commitment. Um, I see Israel as an aggressor state. I see Israel as an apartheid state. I think that we are, as Americans, supporting a, a, a militant uh, regime, regime in Tel Aviv that is uh, wreaking uh, havoc mm -hmm. upon the Palestinians and are, con are doing things that are contrary to the laws of man, the laws of God, the laws of nations, et cetera. So my opinion is we should not be supporting Israel in any shape, manner, or form. But the, the sad reality is uh, the people that run Washington, D.C. Uh, are pretty much controlled by uh, Zionist philosophy, and they are going to continue to support Israel. So Benjamin Netanyahu's concern that by withdrawing forces from Syria, they somehow or another going to jeopardize Israel, I think, is just public theater. There, there's no real concern.
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, you talk about the issue and you talk extensively about the issue of privatizing the wars, the U.S. wars. Mm -hmm. Most of the U.S. forces actually fighting in Syria, the thousands of uh, in numbers, are actually based in Iraq. And as Trump was telling the world that he is withdrawing U.S. forces from Syria, the U.S. Army was in the process of building two brand new bases in the Ambar province which is less than 100 kilometers from the Syrian border. Also, Senator Lindsey Graham happily ensured that Trump is not going to abandon the Syrian theater. Tell us, please, Dr. Baldwin, about the real story behind Trump's military decisions in the region. Yeah, there's What about Blackwater, for example? We right. are coming back. Right. right. Uh, there, there are a lot of people that are are trying to warn the the American uh, population that what Mr. Trump is doing is typical to his philosophy of of making big business bigger. Uh, he is in the process of privatizing much of the military uh, campaign in the Middle East. Eric Prince, the founder of Blackwater is heavily influential in the Trump White House. They have been conversing for a long time regarding the idea of withdrawing military troops and inserting uh, mercenary forces mm -hmm. from the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the problem with that, as I see it, is these mis mercenary forces are completely unaccountable to of the course. rule of law. Exactly. They they do yeah they are not accountable to the U.S. Constitution or to the law of nations, international law, uh, UN law, uh, Geneva Convention, etc. Uh, th these are uh, groups that basically are are not accountable to any human authority. We already are aware of many of the atrocities that have taken place at the hands of organizations such as Blackwater. Uh, in Iraq uh, back when when that war was hot. Uh, now then, we are getting ready to uh, reinsert these mercenary troops in that region of the world. This can only portend uh, uh, very bad things uh, for the people that live there. And what that will do is anger uh, people even more against the United States and against the Western forces that are there in their country, uninvited, et cetera. And it will, it will help to uh, create more animosity and hatred against us, which is not what we, what we should be wanting to do. Mm -hmm. We should be wanting to stabilize, make peace with people, and, and you know, let people know that, that we do believe in honor and we do believe in, in the rule of law and we do believe in justice and all these things, but uh, mercenary troops are not the ones that are, are gonna be <laughs> Exactly, the they are going to, to distort the image of the US of A more in the region. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, sir, an observer notes that Trump does not seek war with Iran, but rather is convinced of a popular uprising in Iran that will topple the state due to not just uh, exiting the nuclear deal, the JCPOA, but of going uh, that mile further into seeking to overthrow the Islamic Republic through sanctions. Is this how you understand the tough sanctions against Iran today? Would it succeed or will it be um, the albatross which Trump unwisely hung about his own neck? I don't think it will succeed. Uh, there's no question that our CIA are involved in the so-called uprising in Iran. Uh, that has been a favored tactic of uh, intelligence agencies uh, around the world, uh, is to insert uh, disruptors and provocateurs into society uh, in order to try and and stir up rebellion among people against uh, a government that uh, our government doesn't like. Well, we've done that in nations all over the world, not just Iran. But we are doing that in Iran. It, it, it will not work. The Iranian uh, regime is not going to be toppled 
by its own people, I do not believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the American government has determined to take the side of the Sunni Muslims in Saudi Arabia and has decided to make the Shia Muslims of Iran uh, the enemy. So I think the United States has chosen to prefer Israel, uh, the Zionists in Tel Aviv and, and the Sunnis in Riyadh and so forth to uh, help to destroy the regime in not just Syria, but also Iran. So I don't, I don't, I don't foresee this as stopping mm -hmm. with uh, some kind of a political uprising among the people in Iran. Right, I sir. Allow us, Dr. Baldwin, to stop for a short break, and then afterwards we're going to talk a bit about your assessment of the elections, of modern elections, and why are you so depressed? But after the break, إذا فاصل قصير ونعود لا تذهب بعيدا. لعل نخب الدولة العميقة في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية تتلاعب بكل المؤسسات الأمريكية مثل مجلس الشيوخ ومجلس النواب لإنجاز أجندتهم التي هي الحرب الدائمة في الخارج والنزاع الأبدي في الداخل هذا ما أعرب عنه القص والسياسي الأمريكي تشاك بولدوين عبر صفحته على فيسبوك قبل انطلاق الانتخابات النصفية حيث يعد الانتخابات الحديثة محبطة عموما ولكن لماذا؟ Uh, or who or which party wins, that everything stays pretty much the same. The, the deep state is mm -hmm. in charge for the most part of the leadership of both political parties. And one of the agendas of the deep state is perpetual war. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether Republicans win the Congress or if a Republican sits in the White House or Democrat the perpetual war doctrine that's been in place since 2001 uh, continues to go forward. It, it's, it's amazing to me how that people think they're getting change whenever they switch political parties or put a new president in the White House. But for the most part, everything stays the same, especially in the area of foreign policy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, um, experts... and. I know that uh, when you say this, it's, it comes from a person who have been uh, through all those lines. You've been a Democrat and then you became a Republican for 20 years. And then you uh, uh, was one of the spears of the Constitution Party. And then you decided to become an independent. Do you think that, right. <laughs> why? Why have you just, you know, uh, finalized everything by becoming just an independent? It's because perhaps uh, you are depressed actually by what those parties are representing. Well, yeah, I, I find it to be an exercise in futility mm -hmm. to be identified with a particular political party. Mm -hmm. uh, when in, the, in most cases, as I've said, uh, you know, they are pretty much the same in, in actual policy. Now, understand that third parties of our country are, are, are much different than two major parties. The party I ran uh, for president in uh, 2008 with uh, the Constitution Party, mm -hmm. as you noted, it has a very different platform. And, you know, if, if I'd been elected president, we would have immediately uh, started the process of withdrawing our forces from around the world we would have stopped foreign aid to all the countries of the world, including Israel. Our foreign policy would have been one of peace and uh, letting nations uh, coexist peacefully and, and trading with, mm -hmm. with nations peacefully, right. et cetera. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the war mentality would not have gone forward. But the two major parties, uh, they are not going to entertain that kind of ideology. They, they are both a warmongering party. And as I've said, 
there's really only one party in Washington, D.C., and that's the war party. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that's what we have. In line of which, experts believe that for Russia, Trump's withdrawal from the um, Intermediate Range Missile Treaty, which is the INF, confirms that an attack on Russia is being prepared. China also sees war on the horizon, as China's president has ordered the military to, quote, prepare for war. Is it clear to the American people, to the media, to the Congress, what is being prepared? <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. Now, the Congress, people in the Congress may know, but I don't think the average American really comprehends the way in which America is inciting war around the world. The, the American media is pretty much a propaganda tool for the government. Mm -hmm. And so everything the American people hear on network television, especially, it doesn't matter whether it's CNN or Fox, they are always promoting the, the government line and the American people very rarely hear anything different. And of course, the government line is that America is trying to preserve peace and we are the ones that are the custodians of the world peace and, and we are uh, the uh, indispensable nation, et cetera, et cetera. And everything we're doing around the world is good. And, you know, that's what that's what most people believe. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that we are instigating war with China and Russia by some of the things that you've already mentioned. I mean, in fact, we are building military bases uh, rapidly on the very border of Russia. We know we saw we see that going on right now. Europe, yes. mm -hmm. Sure. And, you know, we are encroaching further and further into uh, the waters of, of China. You know, we seem to be goading both those countries into hostile uh, reaction. So I don't think most of the American people see it that way. I see it that way. And there's a lot of others that are independent-minded thinkers uh, that analyze facts uh, independently and objectively who agree with me. But I would say the vast majority of the American people do not understand just how aggressively the American nation is inciting uh, hostilities around the world. Right. Uh, Dr. Chuck Baldwin, I have lots and lots of other questions that I would like to ask you about, but I'm afraid that time has run uh, short. Dr. Chuck Baldwin, American politician, pastor of the Liberty Fellowship in Montana and the presidential nominee of the Constitution Party for the 2008 U.S. presidential election. Many thanks indeed for joining us from the U.S. state of Montana, sir. Thank you, Zain. It was great to be with you. It's our pleasure, sir. Always. إذا لقاء جديد في الأسبوع المقبل مع ضيف جديد وقضية جديدة ودائما من الداخل للمزيد من التواصل بريدنا The Inside at الميادين.net وصفحتنا على الفيسبوك من الداخل من كل فريق عمل البرنامج من كل الميادين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله